So we're ready to start our discussions on discrete time Fourier series. Uh, so if you recall, uh, we said uh, in the early modules that a continuous time periodic signal uh, has a Fourier series decomposition, uh, which states that if it exists, uh, that signal can be represented as a superposition of, of, discrete, uh, of continuous time periodic complex exponentials. And similar, a similar result holds uh, for the uh, discrete time as well. Uh, so for the discrete time, uh, for, for a signal which has a period of capital N as, as, as the signal X of N here, is the Fourier series decomposition um, you know, for this. So the Fourier series decomposition is, is given as, which is, as X of N being equal to a superposition of discrete time complex exponential, which are scaled uh, by the Fourier series coefficients, which are called the uh, spectral coefficients as well. Um, so AK times the harmonics, and this is E raised by J uh, K corresponding with the Kth harmonic, and two pi by capital N being the frequency um, for the uh, for the signal in radians per sample uh, times N, where small n, of course, is the time index, which is the independent variable. And this two pi by N, of course, is omega naught, um, so, which is the, as I said earlier, uh, is the frequency in radians uh, per sample uh, for the discrete time case. Now, um, just to try to compare this with the with the with the continuous time case, uh, let me put this into into a bit of perspective here um, by just um, displaying the uh, continuous time Fourier series representation here. Uh, where capital T, of course, is the is the period uh, corresponding to that the discrete time, uh, to the continuous time periodic signal. Um, and uh, one of the things we observe here is it consisted of a summation which went from minus infinity uh, to plus infinity. Now this begs the question whether the same thing is going to hold true uh, for the continuous time case uh, for the discrete time case as well. In other words, what should the limits for this summation be? Should it go from minus infinity to plus infinity? or something else. Now, this is something I want you to think about before moving forward. I suggest that you pause the video here uh, and think about this, try to come up with an answer of what this limit should be uh, before uh, playing it again. So hopefully uh, you've done that brainstorming uh, and uh, better still, you've been able to come up with an answer. Uh, if you have not, let me uh, give you an answer nevertheless. Um, so it turns out that this summation uh, this summation cannot be from minus infinity to infinity, should not be from minus infinity to in plus infinity. And the underlying reason is exactly uh, what we uh, saw in the review model earlier, which was review model earlier, which was that there's a wraparound effect in the frequency in the discrete time. In other words, uh, the frequencies are not unique. And the only unique, fre so unique frequency, for example, you'd be able to find in the interval zero to two pi, any frequency outside of this interval, is going to wrap back to the same same interval, and that's the underlying reason why the summation cannot uh, be uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, in order to elaborate on this further, uh, let's try to visualize the the frequencies in the discrete time, uh, which, if you recall, we said uh, have a wraparound effect. So, when uh, let's start out with the index k equals zero and see what frequency does that correspond to. Uh, so, when k equals zero. Uh, when k equals zero, k equals zero corresponds to a frequency which is omega k, which is two pi times k divided by n, uh, which of course is equal to zero. So this is where um, the frequency is corresponding to uh, k equals zero. And of course, the frequency uh, changes um, around this direction um, uh, so as omega increases. For k equals one, um, you have a frequency here so which is k equals one, and the frequency is a equal to uh, two pi uh, divided by n, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so for the case, for instance, let me just, so for k equals two, you have a frequency here. For k equals three, you have a frequency here. k equals four, you have a frequency here, and so on and so forth. Um, and it turns out that, so you're gonna have, uh, the frequencies uh, uniformly distributed on this circle uh, having uh, n points and this last point is going to be the one that corresponds to k equals n minus one 
And of course, that corresponds to a frequency which is uh, 2 pi divided by n times n minus 1. And of course, 2 pi divided by n times n minus 1 is just one step before 2 pi. And as soon as k becomes equal to n, and for k becomes equal to n, so for k equals to n, you're back here. So this is k equals to n omega k once again is 2 pi divided by n times n, which is 2 pi, but that's equivalent to the frequency of zero once again. And therefore what we conclude is that the indices of k in the interval zero to n minus one are actually sufficient to cover all of the unique frequencies that exist in the discrete time uh, domain. Uh, as soon as, for example, k becomes equal to capital N, that's where the frequency once again is what you, the frequency that you started out with. So, for this, so therefore, one of the things that, different in, that is different in the discrete time case, which is because of the underlying wraparound effect of the frequency in discrete time, is that the Fourier series decomposition, it does not have infinitely many harmonics, but rather only n unique harmonics. So the summation goes from k equals zero um, to n minus one. Um, so let me write this here. So x of n, that is the Fourier series decomposition corresponding to a uh, discrete time periodic signal where the summation goes from k equals zero to n minus one. A sub k is which are the Fourier series uh, coefficients in k times two pi by n times n. Now, in order to be more precise, um, you can actually, if you think about this for a little bit, um, a little bit more, uh, you will figure out that this k does not necessarily have to start at zero uh, in order to cover each and every one of the discrete frequencies on, on this circle. In fact, what if you start at k equals one and end at k equals n, even then, so for example, if you start at k equals one, um, you're gonna start at the frequency here, then here, then here, and so on and so forth. And from one all the way up to capital N is where you're gonna be back here. And that would still ensure that you've actually been able to cover each and every one of the discrete frequencies uh, that exist um, in, in, in the discrete time domain. Uh, any other k that you pick, for example, you could k start from k equals two and end at n plus one because n plus one is gonna give you a frequency which, is, which corresponds to k equals one as well. So it does not really matter where you start with the k as long as you're able to cover a continuous number of values in k which are equal to n you're going to be uh, okay and you're going to be able to cover each and every one of the harmonics in the discrete time domain. Uh, so one of the ways or one of the notations that we use to represent that is that instead of saying that k starts from zero, we just say that k is equal to this notation here, where this notation represents that k starts from any number and it covers uh, a continuous uh, interval of exactly uh, n values uh, and it does not really matter where you where you where you, the where the starting point is so this is the uh, Fourier series decomposition uh, corresponding to uh, a discrete time signal and this thing as you can very well imagine is called the um, synthesis equation um, and what we're going to do next is our job is going to try to determine uh, what the Fourier series coefficients a sub k's are uh, given some periodic second. So our job, of course, that means is going to try to derive uh, the analysis equation uh, for the discrete time case. Now what we want to do is we want to try to determine the Fourier series coefficients a sub k uh, given this uh, analysis equation that we just uh, saw a while ago. And the way I'm going to do this is pretty much follow the same strategy uh, that we had used for the continuous time case. Um, so, so for the continuous time case as well, what we did was uh, we took x of n and multiplied x of n with a complex exponential. Um, and in this case, let that be e raised to power minus j uh, two pi by uh, so minus j times some integer r times two pi by n times small n, which is the uh, the time index or the time variable, where this is really is the rth harmonic 
um, for the discrete time case. And let me sum this uh, summation uh, from n equals zero to capital n minus one and try to see uh, what I get out of it. Uh, so in order to determine what this turns out to be, let me just plug in x of n from here, uh, from equation number one. So basically I'm gonna, um, so and let this be, let this be equation number two. So you're basically plugging in equation number one in two. And with that, what you get is that, so two becomes summation over n from zero to n minus one and x of n is just summation over k. We get this goes from zero to n minus one. This is a times a, a sub k e raised to power. And I'm gonna take some of the things as common and this exponential, there's so this exponential multiplied by this exponential, two pi by n is gonna come out. And what I'm gonna get is e raised to power j two pi by capital N, and this is small, um, this is K minus R times N. And let me then bring out the summation corresponding to K and the one corresponding to N inside. So this is A sub K outside because that is not a function of N. And this is summation over N equals zero to n minus one, e raised to part j two pi by capital N, and this is k minus r times n. And then what I can see, I'm, I will not give you uh, the proof for this, but you can use a finite sum relationship to try to determine what this sum is gonna be. Um, and very, very intuitively, this is actually a, a Sinusoid in the in the in the uh, real time real domain and a sinusoid in the complex domain, which has a period of capital n sample, and you're summing this over the enti entire entire uh, so uh, our integer number of periods, and you're going to get this to be equal to zero uh, whenever k is not equal to r, and when this k equals r, you're just summing one uh, capital n number of times. So this is going to be equal to capital N when K equals R. So essentially what this really is, is that this is capital N times delta of K minus R, which is pretty much the same uh, method that we had in the Cartesian's time case as well. So therefore, what this summation therefore becomes is summation from K equals zero to n minus one, this is a k times n times delta k minus r. And since delta k minus r is equal to one only when k equals r, so out of these summations, with out of these summation, in this summation, there's only one term that's gonna be left, and that term is gonna to correspond to the index uh, when k equals r, and all of the others are gonna be nulled out. So therefore, this is equal to capital N times A sub R. Now what I can conclude from here is, remember this thing here is actually equal to the, this thing that, that we started out with. Um, and therefore my conclusion is that A sub R is actually equal to one upon N and this summation from N equals zero to capital N minus one. Um, x of n times e raised to power minus j r to pi by capital N times n. Um, and uh, by convention, um, so r, instead of r, I can use any variable. So by convention, the variable that we typically use is k. So I'm just gonna replace uh, to this r with k. Um, so this becomes k and this becomes k. And moreover, so there's something that you can verify that it does not really matter uh, where I'm summing this from. So 
I can sum this over any uh, period of the of the periodic signal, and I would get the same result. Uh, that's something you can you can think about on your own. Um, so this really is equal to one upon n, where this summation is over any period uh, of the uh, this of the periodic signal x of n. And so this is x of n e raised to power minus j k two pi by n times n. Um, and this is as you can could have would have guessed correctly by now. This equation is the um, analysis equation. So one final point I want to address uh, is uh, with regards to the periodicity of the four series coefficients in the discrete time case. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the analysis equation you can see from over here. Um, so from over here, uh, let me use this analysis equation to try to determine what the uh, coefficient a, not with an index k, but rather k plus capital N is going to be. So this turns out to be equal to one upon N summation n over a period capital n all i'm going to do is i'm going to replace uh, this k with k plus n here and let's see what happens there so this is x of n times e raised to the power minus j k plus capital n times 2 pi by capital n times small n so this is 1 upon n summation n over any period of the of the periodic signal so this is x of n e raised to power minus j k 2 pi by n times n and i can get e raised to power minus j 2 pi times n outside and why because this capital n is going to cancel with this capital n and i know for a fact that this thing here this thing here of course is one so what I end up getting is that this really is a k, right? So therefore, there is an inherent periodicity in the Fourier series coefficients as well. So a one is actually equal to a of um, a of n plus one. A zero is actually equal to a capital n, and and so on. So a two is equal to a of n plus two. So there's a periodicity in the Fourier series coefficient, and that period is equal to um, is equal to two. Uh, and in fact. Um, so if a1 is equal to a capital uh, capital n, that should be the same. Uh, so a of n plus one, that should be the same as a of two n plus one. So it does not really matter. Um, so if I have an integer multiple of capital n here, I would get the same result back again. So the conclusion is that a of k is actually equal to a of k plus any integer m times capital N, where capital N is your uh, period of the uh, of the continue, uh, discrete time signal. So here's the summary. Um, so if there's a there's a periodic signal uh, discrete in the discrete time uh, which has a period of capital N samples, uh, that can be represented as a superposition of complex ex uh, discrete time complex exponentials uh, given by this expression, which is the synthesis expression. Uh, where these four series coefficients or the spectral coefficients can be determined through the analysis expression uh, given over here. Uh, one of the important uh, differences uh, from the continuous time case is that the summation is over a finite interval uh, and that finite interval is over, of, over any length, uh, capital N, um, uh, where capital N is a period. Similarly, this summation is also finite and also, another one of the important differences is that the Fourier series coefficients, although are indexed from minus infinity to plus infinity, they are periodic. In other words, essentially the unique Fourier series coefficients are always capital N in number, for example, A0 to A of N minus one, but outside of this interval, uh, they once again wrap around and there's an inherent uh, uh, periodicity of the Fourier series coefficients. So A sub Ks are equal to A sub K plus M times capital n where m is any uh, integer. Uh, 